Hello and welcome to the Two Man Power Trip of Wrestling. I'm your host, JP John Paz. With me today is a very special guest. You may know him as the Human Wrecking Ball, the Silverback, the former OVW World Heavyweight Champion, the former WB Intercontinental Champion. He is, of course, the big guy, the Ryback. Ryback, welcome to Two Man Power Trip. How you doing? Very good, thank you. You forgot the Heroes and Legends uh, heavyweight champion and the uh, <laughs> Australian rock and roll wrestling heavyweight champion. <laughs> Two other prestigious titles to add to that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I also love that uh, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, always called you the Ryback or the Ryback instead yes. of Ryback. I always loved that. I always thought that was a little, you know, little nod there, a little cool thing. That was uh, when we rode together, me, him, and Cody Rhodes uh, for a brief period before. I realized that I was going to invest in my myself and riding alone uh, for my own sanity to have the three hour gym time that they no one was going to agree on and uh, and to eat at the restaurants that I wanted to eat at. But I look back; those were very fond times of um, I get along with those guys very well. We had a very interesting dynamic. I heard that Daniel Bryan is a little bit of a bully. Is that true? Daniel Bryan, so Daniel Bryan, one, so first of all, nobody has ever bullied me. Nobody ever will. Right, of course. So Dan, I think, but Dan is a shit disturber. And, and and Cody Rhodes is a fantastic storyteller as well as Dan. And they like to, they will, they will sacrifice the truth for a good story um, at times or, or stretch things to make a story better, uh, which what makes in, in pro wrestling is, is a very good trait to have. Yeah. Uh, so but yeah, Dan will. Uh, Dan gets bored very easily, or he used to, anyways. I haven't been there in, in a while, and Dan would would find ways to entertain himself uh, at, at whatever expense that would come. <laughs> yeah. So, but he's such a uh, a fun loving, great guy. So it was uh, it was never like it was never anything like fish, like you know, with ill intent, or it was always, you know like grabbing onto my hips when Pat Patterson was in the hallway. Uh, and, and then which I would start like kind of getting up down the hallway and Pat's just looking at us like, what the hell's going on sort of thing. And uh, you just got to know to just go roll with the punches with him. So. Yeah, absolutely. So what's been going on? What's been going on in your world lately? I know you keep it very busy. Yeah. yeah, no running, feed me more nutrition has been the the main thing. And, and the main thing with getting my health with everything and uh, you know, the, the truth is uh, for the people that have followed me know the truth. And then if there's the other portion of people that, that don't, and then they don't, but you know, leaving when I left and, and I've been very transparent and honest on my end and, and things came to me as I went along, but you know, uh, walked out and needed a five disc fusion shoulder replacement. And I've had 19 stem cell procedures. I've been truly blessed and uh, I'm in a very, very good place mentally, physically, just, and financially everything in my life of since leaving, uh, in which my back is now 100%. We've regrown five disc with, with the 19 stem cell procedures, uh, a company called bio accelerator, which Austin Aries actually works for, um, and worked there after I got hooked up with them, but they've sent me down there twice, given me over a hundred thousand dollars in treatments. And, uh, without wow. them, I, I'm not better because the treatments in the United States aren't as powerful. And, uh, I, I honestly have just been blessed and, and it's, and I think been aligned with some really good people along the way that have, um, feel like physiotherapist and, and chiropractors, uh, uh, and a massage therapist here in Vegas, which I'll tell you about that. It's a kind of funny story. Um, how I've just kind of got linked up with these people, uh, that have helped me, um, overcome the impossible. Cause I was done. And then I didn't know I was done. And, and when I left at 34, and I did independence for like two and a half, three years to, and then I, I've been very honest about this because I made a lot of money and I was not, but my doctor did not want me doing wrestling because I needed the five disc fusion and shoulder replacement, which I didn't come out and say right away because one, you don't want to put your health issues out there necessarily in the wrestling business as far as to that extent. Yeah. Um, and then when I saw to, saw, started seeing a lot of lies coming out, I go, I'm just going to have to be transparent and fully honest with what's going on. But that money that I made, helped fuel feed me more nutrition because that, that i mean starting a supplement company hundreds of thousands of dollars not cheap yeah yeah and it was i started with three supplements we have 13 now so it is it's been a very cool process to do that but if i did not do those independents i would have financially and i always i was fine i had money and a lot of other things 
but I don't want to touch that. And, and I, I built that kind of a security blanket and I knew what I had and what I was comfortable leaving with, but I knew that that window was going to be probably a two, three year window of, of <laughs> making 5k a weekend per show for a half K and take full advantage of that, you know, for what I did. But anyways, we're down to the final. I'm in the fourth quarter of this whole thing. My shoulder was just got a little more scar tissue. We got to break up. Um, but like I, I tell people, it needed to be replaced. I had atrophy all on my right side. Um, and it took all these stem cell procedures to get the tissue to even be in a state of being able to be broken up, essentially. Because it's, it's wow. called, there's different terms you can call it. But essentially, my shoulder, the lat, the bicep, tricep, I mean, the scapula, the, the whole, the trap, the neck, everything froze to heal, like it, it, to, to restrict movement from being injured and, and getting injected with cortisone when I was in WWE and ate away all the cartilage. A lot of like negative things happened. And then I also in this process had to switch my diet. I'm full vegan. I've been vegan for almost a, a year and a month now. And wow, it really? Was, yes. And I went vegetarian the year prior. And this became recommended to me through the stem cell company which was the only thing I never would look at my entire life. But I wanted, I go, health is my number one priority. I was eating so much animal products and pounds of meat a day. My body was in a constant state of inflammation. And it wasn't until I went full vegan, the scar tissue, my, tissue in my shoulder started breaking up it, with, with the different techniques we've been doing, which it wasn't breaking up the first few years. So here we are. I've been aligned. I see three therapists a week. Um, two on one day and then one on the other. Sometimes I'll go four times a week uh, if I could fit it in um, where, and then I do my softball for two to three hours a day, rolling on a softball in between all my stuff and working from the floor um, to, cause the tissue just needs to constantly be stretched and uh, manipulated in different angles for that tissue to explode essentially, which I posted videos on my social media, but that's kind of what I'm dealing with and uh, just getting it. I, I never want to lose my health ever again. And I've come this far. So we're like, it's like literally like fourth quarter, like ready. It could be any month at this point, just kind of gearing up, getting ready for everything and, and then getting ready to put the pedal back to the metal. So, And you mentioned that massage therapist. What, what's the story there? Yeah. So I, I've got, I got lined up with these two different chiropractors uh, through that are, they work out of extreme couture here in town, which Moxley actually trains down there. Francis Naganu, all the, um, it, it's a who's who's down there. Uh, and these guys come from this guy, Dr. Bo Hightower, who I got linked up with starting my YouTube channel, Ryback TV. It's just been a blessing. I kind of come across these people that are really, really experienced in, in, in improving the body in, in various techniques. So anyways, I started seeing those guys and, but there was, they do like dry needling and, and different, like adjustments obviously and like hammer stuff and all of it works really well but the the scar tissue needs to be manipulated with movement they, it's kind of like active range therapy with pressure and manipulating the joint it's very painful at times so i've not been found i was never not able to find anyone with any of this that that actually truly understood the scar tissue aspect of this gotcha I'm all the way across town in Vegas, and I hadn't been to a, a massage place in I don't know how long. I gave ever since I left WWE, I just kind of stopped getting massages. I just it was like I stopped going to the chiropractor until I got linked up with these guys. And I'm, I'm cross town. I'd actually had had a date and, and met with someone for lunch this afternoon. And I'm all the way across town, and I'm driving, and I go, I see this spa, and I, for whatever reason, I go go into that spa. I go into this spa. I book an hour session. This lady tells me, she goes, we only have, we're booked today. We can get you in for 30 minutes. Just specifically, I wanted her to look at my shoulder. This woman, is, I call her my Asian angel, is the only woman who understands scar tissue. And after that first session with her, she told me, she goes, you're more messed up than anybody I've ever seen in my 30 years of doing this. She's the same age as me. And she goes, you need to see me at least once a week. And I go, I just, at the time I go, what do I have to lose? I was in so much pain and like my shoulder just wouldn't move. It just stuck. And uh, it was very, it's a very defeating feeling. And uh, so I start seeing her every week. They go from one hour sessions to one and a half hour sessions to two hour sessions to three hour sessions uh, of every week 
she was so burnt out she couldn't because working on me it was just on the shoulder specifically three hours and here we are a year and a half later almost almost two years and and she tells me everywhere she goes she goes i can't believe you're almost better like it's the range of motion of things where we couldn't even put my arm and i mean i'm screaming in pain like biting my teeth and we're like i got full range of motion back on pretty much everything and we just got to get a couple little areas of scar tissue to kind of release and uh but like that's what i talked about like i've been blessed and i don't know like what are the odds of finding this one person at a Thai spa that in my entire life I've never met, you know, specific people that, that are experts in this field, not understand like this, this issue. And uh, it's, it, it's un unbelievable like that. I'm even sitting here talking about it and like, I'm not in pain for the first time since in my twenties. And yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah. So she comes out, I've I got a, a massage table at the house. I've got hot stones uh in the whole deal set up literally she like either if i can't make it into her office she comes here and uh in, in every week man and just like clockwork and i just saw her yesterday and we just like we got literally two areas left that we're working on and um i know a lot of people can't really understand it so like the easiest thing i say is my career was done at 34 i should have retired and due to having stem cells existing in, in and in, i call it the hungry mindset of just being too stubborn to give up here I am at 39. I literally feel like I have an age today and feel better than I have since my 20s. So, yeah, you still look great, obviously. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's, uh, I, I, I really, every day I wake up, I could sit up out of bed. I couldn't do anything, man. I was really, really bad. And um, it's, like I said, just it, it was uh, the best decision I ever made leaving because if I didn't, I would have been in a wheelchair for the rest of my life when I would have been forced to get the five disc fusion. In, in shoulder replacement because it would have been too late. So, well, what happened to the arm originally? Was it just too many bumps, or was there a specific no. thing that happened? So, for the shoulder, it was when I was in um, Florida Championship Wrestling, but it actually dates back. So, you get injured in wrestling; you just work injured. But right. the part of the problem we see this in with that WWE schedule is you just work through injuries, right? And you 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 don't say anything as far as like, hey, I need I need to go get MRIs or. It's just kind of like an unwritten thing. You just keep going. And so, but unfortunately in my case, with my shoulder, I'd had surgery in FCW in 2009. I actually tore my 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 bicep tendon in Deep South Wrestling, my first year in wrestling. I'm not going to talk about the details of how that happened. People that know wrestling know the Deep South Wrestling story. It was boot camp and it was tough and there were no doctors around and, um, and it was it was it was screwed up at times, but I, I, I'm grateful for the whole thing because it, it ended up making me a lot of money down the line with what I did learn. But I had a shoulder injury that never got taken care of, so I got re-signed and go to FCW. And I that shoulder injury, I just was dealing with the pain, and they realized there was a problem. Sent me to the doctor. I had to have full blown shoulder surgery there on the bicep tendon, and then I had a couple like a labrum tear, and there were like three tears in the shoulder. So I'm out with that. And recover, go up to the main roster and, you know, debut as Skip, Sheff Skip Sheffield, then have the ankle injury, and then come back as Ryback. They, I had a lot of scar tissue. We never did any scar tissue. They didn't have a rehab program like we have, like they have now, right? And it, right. Things evolve. So you just, you, you have surgery, you do weights, you do the recovery, and then you, you're back. Um, well, they started injecting me with cortisone and Toradol by, right as Ryback from the beginning. The cortisone was going in my joint. And at the end of the day, I take responsibility for allowing it. But when you're told you're going to be all right, and it's just something to help take away the pain and you trust people. And it's at the end of the day, though, you allow it. So it's your fault. But it ate away all my cartilage, um, like really quickly. And my shoulders started grinding towards the end up there. And uh, when I left there, that tore it all in cortisone that I was getting all the time. What wore off. And that's where I go, holy, holy shit, my body's messed up. And then it was, I was kind of, you know, left to, to figure it all out and been blessed, like I said, to do that. But it wasn't just like the, the wrestling schedule, you know, everyone knows it's difficult and you go out there and you, you know what you're getting into. I had uh, some, those events with the, the shoulder injury, but my ankle injury, a lot of people don't realize when I broke the ankle in, in Hawaii during Nexus, that was they 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 messed up my perineal and superficial nerves on the surgery, uh, which I had permanent nerve damage in my left foot, big toe, 
that runs directly into my uh, my back, my L4 and L5, which those were the first two discs to start rapidly uh, degenerating. And then doing the moves that I was doing, like the backpack stunner, then all the feats of strength and just the schedule in general, my L1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 just degenerated. Um, but it was all tied into that ankle injury, which I didn't even know it at the time. And I didn't know it until I had went to and got seen by people. And we were able to piece this whole thing together. Like, why did my back degenerate? at such a rate in, in where it should not, if that was going to happen, it shouldn't have been toward much later in life. Um, but you, you know, I've learned and I know what I'm not going to do when I go back. And, uh, I've used this time to grow and, and, and be grateful for everything, but to, to really put health as a number one priority. Um, because a lot of wrestlers and we see they die younger than anybody. Uh, yeah. it's, it's the unfortunate part of the business of you do things and you think you're going to be superhuman forever. Or you think you just worry about this day, get through this week. Well, those weeks turn to months, turn to years really quickly. Uh, and then you wake up and you're 50, 60 years old. If you make it that far pretty quickly and the injuries that you, you develop while there get a lot worse as time goes on. Usually um, unless you really create some really good habits and make some positive changes. Uh, and even then you can get to the point of no return. Like I've said, and along the way, I remember before I got the stem cells, I was at a signing and, and Farouk, Ron Simmons was there. And I just think I've been blessed with things happening to me. And I didn't know what I, I didn't know about the stem cells yet. And I just knew I needed a five disc fusion, they told me. And I was really, really bad. And he he had like, I think, a one or two disc fusion. And he was just saying he was never the same after getting it. And uh, And just something told me, if you get this now at 34, 35 years old, you're, I mean, there's no coming back from that. There's right. the pain might have been lessened, but there was going to be no, no more, no more physical uh, as far as the things that I enjoy, and um, I just wasn't ready to accept that. So, gotcha. So you asked for your release from WB? I walked out. Yeah. No, I don't know what people. That, again, that was I left, and again, I think they obviously with Mark Carano was there. They put out. People got to realize the game, what they do with that and like i've done nothing i think everything i've ever said is 100 truth no no one will ever find anything i say and say oh that was a complete lie like with that and i would say if they fired me i would they fired me they didn't i walked out i knew what was going on in the contract stuff going on i had a multi-million dollar deal on the table they wanted my trademarks though with everything and they wanted me to sign that over and i hadn't agreed on certain things yet and i literally got to tv saw what was going on and the booking was going to start getting a lot worse because I hadn't signed the contract after putting over Kalisto the last two pay-per-views and yep. which I've talked about that countless times. And it's, it's, it's all cool. I'm all great. I'll never have any issues doing business and that. And I just said, I need to go and I need to go. And I left and I walked out. I told them to take me off their TV show. Uh, I was asked if I wanted to see Vince. I essentially I said no in, in not so nice words. I got my bags. I left the building. I hopped in my rental car. I drove to Hooters and I had some beers and chicken wings at the time because I wasn't vegan yet. And uh, and I made the decision that I was done forever with that company with the kiss based off of everything that had happened legally that we saw it play out creatively and different things. So it was uh, but I left. They then were going to stop my pay, which I knew they were going to do. But again, I thought this out for, for quite some time. Uh, so the moment they tried to freeze my pay because my contract ended August 8th, 2016, and I walked out, I believe, in May, right after the payback pay-per-view um, in Chicago. I left that next day. St. Louis was the last building I went to. Um, and then I left that building and went home. Um, when they tried to stop my pay a week or two later, I then said, well, I got to get my ear and nose fixed. That My nose was broken in Deep South Wrestling and never got fixed. And I said my eardrum was busted in Deep South Wrestling and never got fixed. Never can't he Couldn't hear through it. And I said, I need to get those fixed. And uh, so I went on injury pay. Um, in which they were pressuring me to get cleared for the months leading up to the contract uh, expiring because they, and I, I'm friends with people there in the office in which they already smartened me up that the moment I told them I was cleared, they would have tried to fire me before the contract expired so that they could make it look like they, they got rid of me, even though I'd walked out and then I released them in a video. And that was that in the contract. I got cleared the day after <laughs> the contract expired and, and that was that, man. It was just essentially beating them at their own game, which is just pettiness at all levels. But it is what it is. 
Yeah, because that's the perception that they put out there that they released you, that you didn't walk out. That's like the Carano thing or whatever, the uh, the um, talent relations part of it, the PR part of it that they've put out there. But, I, but that's not, I don't think that's out there. It's, my contract expired on August 8th. And the, that but it was they, weird they, the way they worded it. It was weird. I think I don't think, but yeah, I think a lot of the times though you're dealing with dirt sheets and people not in the know that come up with their opinions that have no real true knowings of the business or what's going on. My okay. thing is, how are you going to? And I have the contract. I posted it. How are you going to though deny the people's word for that are actually living it over people that have no understanding or knowing they're not involved in the business? That always has fascinated me. And especially people that have a track record of telling the truth. Like, why are you believing other things over that? It's not simply not the case. And I think we live in a time and age where people are looking for clicks and they'll they'll put out yeah. anything oh, yeah. they want to put, but they always try to control the narrative. They always have. And I'm dealing with all the BS people don't understand with them still, like legally over my Ryback trademark, which I've won everything. I own the big guy, I own Feed Me More, I own everything that I've I've done with, with my branding and my website and my nutrition. And when I left there, they tried to, they, I have the legal letters that I posted. They, uh, they wanted my social media accounts and all my trademarks. They wanted me, they sent one last legal letter in 2016 for me to give them my social media, not to change my name, mind you, to give them everything, which they've never done for another talent. And I asked people, I go, why do you think they wanted my accounts? Cause they know what I'm able to do. And they know that how popular I was when that they had to fight for everything to try to destroy all that. Yeah, they wanted followers. Yeah. They yeah, but they want to control the narrative, and they don't want people to have success outside of the company. They have had my social media suppressed since 2016, and I've had I've, I'm working with different people to try to get this fixed. They they're partners with Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and they've gone in and they so they essentially limit how much you're seen by your own following. Like on Twitter, I'm not even seen by half a percent of my own following. On the majority, I, majority of my stuff will be seen by between two and seven thousand people, and which I have one point four million. And when I left there in two thousand sixteen, I had one point five million, and I had fantastic impressions and engagement that dropped off overnight when I did not sign that over legally to them. And it's been something it, it's that I'm going to have to pursue probably once I'm back uh, from a legal standpoint. It's really frustrating, but that's and it's not just me. They've done that to other people. That's their way of controlling the narrative. And it's, but it's beyond personal and there it's, you know, it's one of those deals. You can't just sit back and like be positive and smile on because nothing will change. And I try to tell people to explain to like to them what's going on is, you know, imagine you're sitting in your home, just minding your own business and your family's in the living room and you're sitting in the kitchen and somebody breaks into your house and they're going to, and they're going to murder your family right in front of you. Do you think sitting there and being positive and loving is going to solve that situation? Or do you think you're probably going to have to get up and, and fight back? Yeah, and that, and that, yeah, and that's the situation with them. But I, I want it over and done with so I can move on in my life. And I'm going to be awarded the Ryback trademark. It looks like in January or February, if things stand where they are, um, because they've been caught lying to the USPTO. They didn't create it or develop it. And they, they've been caught lying multiple times. So my attorneys beat them at every step of the way. But the social media suppression is the one thing that is truly frustrating because I'm a brand and business owner. And, and to see what they're doing and to give people like kind of an idea, they'll go, well, maybe you're just not relevant. Maybe you've, you've fallen off, right? All, all great points, I would right. say. Well, also I created a TikTok about 20 months ago, which is the only account that has not been suppressed to date because at, at least that I know of, and I'm the second most followed pro wrestler behind only The Rock in 20 months. I would say, I think we would see that across the board, you know, you know, I've gained still with Instagram going on, even though there's been stuff going on there. I'm up to 1.6. I've gained over 500,000 followers, 600,000, I'm sorry, in since leaving, which is still not nearly as impressive, but it's still growing. It's not yes, going, yeah. whereas Twitter hasn't grown. I'm not being seen on that and certain other aspects of social media that, that we've caught going on. But it's you would see it across the board if that was the case, and that's not so. And Twitter is weird too because you're verified. You have the blue check mark. It's you. They know it's you. It's not like a Virgil thing where he got like de verified because they found it. It wasn't Virgil. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's you. You're, you're right back. You you're, have the blue check mark. So yeah. that was a weird thing. So you finally got it back, right? Yeah, got it back. And which somebody, I'm, I'm somebody that works for WWE that I was friends with actually got it back. Twitter denied me twice. They Twitter would oh. not accept, even though I'm legally Ryback Reeves. 
people see a lot of people think too they go well you lost your check mark because you don't own the Ryback deal one you don't say I didn't own the Ryback deal that you that's not they they don't own your social media and the accounts you create I'm, right. I'm legally Ryback Reeves so and then I'm verified I'm also say I was never a pro wrestler I'm now uh, you could say a content provider and owner of a supplement company and podcast host where I've got you know 300 going on 400,000 uh, subscribers on Ryback TV in, in two and a half three years with that and TikTok and a TikTok creator and all these other on social media and they denied me is even that is as a content provider so somebody in WWE was able to upload my ID because Twitter wouldn't accept my ID even though my ID was Ryback Reeves they and uh, finally got me verified. But we're not able to right now. It's like, what do you call it? Shadow banning or suppress? Yeah, yeah shadow banning. Oh, yeah. I, I post my analytics, and this is all being stored legally by me and my my attorney. And we've been doing this because we have the data from before the account this happened, and saw how the impressions and how, what the numbers were. And we're posting the numbers since. Twitter will not acknowledge me, not respond to me. We've submitted numerous cases. They won't respond to the situation, and of just simply talking. Because they, that's why I show people, I go, you can't say, you know, you have 1.4 and a half million followers and 2,000 people see your, only 2,000 people are even seeing the tweet. Right. That's right. it. So how can something take off and nothing does? Even though I'll post something, the same stuff across all the boards. And you know, I've had things get 20 million uh, views on on TikTok and then on, on Twitter, not even, you know, get 4,000 impressions. And it's you. How's that possible with with that following already in place? And it's. Uh, but I know because we know what's going on, and it's just a way to to hold you down. And essentially, the perception they're really big. And Hunter always used to say this: "Well, perception is reality." And I used to go, "No, no, reality is reality. Perception is <laughs> the bullshit that you guys make up to put out to cover your asses." And and it's it's the truth on that. And but that's what they do. And then towards. So people that see that on social media, they go, man, Ryback really fell off. But I just go, well, go look at these other platforms. And again, number two on TikTok behind only The Rock. So I, I think that's a pretty good thing on, on, I don't think I've fallen off quite as far as you want to believe. But Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <clears throat> but how do they say that they could take away the check mark though? Because that, that doesn't really make sense. No. So, that, that, so the check mark fell off because I updated the name. The check mark uh, had nothing... That was, the name was Ryback 22. And then I updated, I was able to get the name Ryback from the guy who had actually took the name. He ga finally gave it to me. Oh, and, okay. And so I updated the name and from, but what I was <clears throat> in, in talking to that guy. And then what I saw online is that this, you could just resubmit and get verified again. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal in which it ended up taking years to get the verification back on that. But this like my big thing is I don't even care about the verification. I care about the impressions. As long as people can see my content, I can care less if there was a blue check mark or not. I just want to be seen because that's the only way you can grow. And what you got to understand, people go, well, why do you care so much? This is in 2021 in having a business. This has cost me hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in organic traffic for my business, which we have a 2% conversion rate from Twitter, which is huge for social media for one platform. So when I'm getting seen only by 2,000 people compared to I could be getting seen by a million, like on the other platforms, do the math, like over yeah. time, that that translates to sales and to, in growth, in perception. And so I have a lot at stake because say I never went back to wrestling ever again. This is stopping me from growing in life as well, because this is all, all part of everyday life, especially when you work for yourself. And they know this because they knew my injuries and they knew everything I was going through. And so this is just kind of everything. It's just, it's all very personal. And that, and that's why I kind of made getting my health back such a big priority because there's going to be hell to pay the moment I'm back. And I, I promise, like you, people thought I've always told the truth. I am going to be louder than I've ever been when I'm back in a positive way, in a very positive way. And it's going to create a lot of excitement, but I will hold nothing back because this is, I've been the one that's had to live through this. So. Now, you mentioned a great quote a while ago, and so many people mentioned about Triple H saying it to you. They don't want to create stars. The yeah. company is the star. What What's the line? What's the quote? And what was the meaning behind it when he said that to you? There'll never be another marquee name after John Cena. And that was during my first contract uh, negotiations uh, when I was red hot. And uh, 
it was it was truly frustrating. When I, the, the day that I heard that, that was when I like I knew that in the way things were going, and I just it, it now and again you could say they were just saying that because the the marquee name they John was still the marquee name at the time, and they didn't have a replacement that they wanted yet for that. Even though Roman was already had been getting pushed for years with that, he wasn't in that position yet either. And John had it left, and I don't think they John had any intentions of leaving or at least made known to them at the time that he was leaving. And in, in, I think at the time, I think they truly meant it because they they weren't looking past that with John Cena. I think since then, Roman has stepped into that role um, more so, even though I would say it's not at the level of John Cena was yet anyways. But he's at least been put into that into yeah. that position, I feel, as a heel uh, and doing a fantastic job as that. But the we've seen it with countless guys there, and that to me was always – they were shooting themselves in the foot because it's people don't pay to see the logo wrestle. You come to say, see larger than life superstars. And I understand, you know, the reason why Vince has been bur burned is because of Vince, not because of the talent talent of always that love wrestling would do anything for that company. The reason why they get put in these positions and people leave and people are unhappy with them is because of Vince's mindset and the way Vince treats people. And it, it's not a good thing. And it's, it's all his own karma and his own doing. And that, and that to me is one of the biggest disappointments in him with me as a, from a human standpoint, that he hasn't evolved in his later years to go out with a better legacy, not for what the people think, but what for the wrestlers think and what they truly think, not what, not what some of them say to come back and get paydays from them. But, and I always spoke truthfully to him and I, I do a lot of reading and a lot of learning on self-development. He is not as for as great of a businessman as he can be. He is not, he's not well evolved and, and he does not have a very high sense of self-development with his mindset. And he's very 48 laws of power, very carny, evil, just ways you don't need to be to the people that have given you everything that you got. My opinion. With him and kind of not wanting somebody to be bigger than WB, what's like the fear there? Because if there's no Hogan, let's say in the eighties, I probably don't become a fan. I mean, he's kind of what attracted me to yeah me giving my money or my parents money mm -hmm. to WB for years. And then it's like, okay, then there's Steve Austin. There's the yeah. rock, you know, there's Cena, maybe even reigns. I mean, don't you need those larger than life guys? Isn't that mm. the point of like becoming a yeah. fan and getting into it? What's Vince's mindset on that? I think it's because it's, and he's told me this countless times is, is it's a business to him uh, that he's just looking at solely his profits, his, his balance sheets, his profit and loss. Um, they have found ways to make more money than ever with yeah. this and so in his mind if it's not broke why fix it as far as they when you one of the rules and it's we've heard this said countless times is never let the wrestlers know how important they are to the business essentially kind of that carny deal they are the business pro wrestling doesn't exist without the wrestlers and you know it, 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 i think for everyone and this isn't like a grateful for the platform and everything but they're the lowest paid athletes entertainers in all the all sports in all of entertainment based off the percentages with that. And at least for there, at least that was always the way it was. Right. I just think it's, he's built people over time. And like I said, they end up leaving him, but they leave him because of his ways. If you, if you treat people good and are honest with them and transparent with them, which we could see you can do and be a business owner. And a lot more business owners today have that mindset and, and you see that in with Tony Khan and Gary Vaynerchuk talks about this all the time. You empower your employees, which we're not even employees for WWE. We're not even allowed to be, right? Independent contractors. But you empower your employees. And you, but he stopped doing that a long time ago. And I think for whatever reason, in his mind, it's just easier in not letting guys get too popular. Because what happens too is, Guys will leave, and they, this is why the opportunities in movies, and they took away countless things for me when I was there with the muscle magazines in, in movies. With they don't want you to see how good it can be outside of there, and that and that's his schedule. That five day a week, live on the road, sacrifice your health, and die for me and my billions. And that's my big issue with him. And people, that that is not something to be worshipped or put on a pedestal. It's not. That is. You tell me how how that's right. And you look, look at all the guys that are dead. Not one phone call from that company. I broke my back and my shoulder. I gave them everything. I was with them since 22. Granted, I've spoken up and told the truth because of everything they're doing legally. And that's all they're doing, not mine. 
I'm simply fighting for my life on this. If I don't, they eat you up and they kill you. I will not die. But that is the mindset that they have. And it's truly not one phone call, nothing over this. I was done. If I didn't have the mindset that I have, probably would have committed suicide years ago. They don't give a shit. That's why I'm motivated and I've spoken up for wrestlers. I don't get anything in this. Everything I've ever spoken up for, I'm not benefiting from. It's probably hurting me even more. But it needs to be spoken up so independent wrestlers, people are informed before they make that decision on signing on with that company. And what we're seeing is more people signing on with other companies and going, I don't need to go work there. But and I and I truly hope to God it changes. And I, and I hope, but I don't think it does until they sell and they get all new management in there all together to get that mindset. They got to get the mindset fixed personally. But so you had was, offers to do magazine covers and, uh, and movies yeah. and other things. Why would they not want that? That would help WB in the long run. That would give them would like think, a yeah. higher, higher ranking. Higher I've standard. talked to flex magazine twice. The Sean Perriman, he unfortunately has passed away. Uh, the, the worked with the head guy for the mus, mus, uh, muscular development and muscle and fitness. I'm sorry, and uh, Flex Magazine. Uh, I, they wanted me on the cover for Flex Magazine, came up to me at Madison Square Garden, uh, got the ball rolling. Hunter straight up came up to me and said they're not letting me do it. Him and Stephanie decided to do the magazine covers uh, for the month that I was offered, along with uh, the Bella Twins, and there was one other person they let do for November, which was supposed to be the month that I was on Flex Magazine. They called me back about a year and change later. They go, we're trying to get you back on the cover of Flex. You're the only guy that we can... That one is for the more muscular guys flex. Like you right. got to be have your muscle and fitness is for lean muscular guys as well. But flex is is rare company. Uh, they go, they're not letting you do it again. They want Roman. We don't want Roman. Roman's not at shape during the time. Roman's in much better shape now than he was then, even though Roman's always been in shape, but he was still wearing the best. They go, Roman's yeah. not in shape. We want you on the cover. They they denied me again. And I just go, what do I do? And that, but that ties in, man, with my legal shit I talked to you about with me sticking up for myself after my ankle injury. And like, you know, it, it's it, it, nothing it, that was all tied into, I think to creatively with me as well. And as well as what their, their business model was at the time. And it is what it is. I'm grateful for everything. The past is the past it's over. And I've used that energy, that ne negative energy to fuel me in a positive direction to go back and, and not let that, not let that ruin me either. Um, and not, not make me bitter as far as in the wrestling business and, uh, and resent the business or anything like that and and not 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 hold it against other people, but learn from those experiences uh, and be grateful for everything that I have now. And I'm truly like I've, I've truly learned the value of happiness and not being I've walked away from fame and that whole deal and learned how to make money with my brain. And it was, you know, I'm very proud of everything. I, I will not take one thing back that happened with that. But at the same time, I have to use that energy that motivates me to stay hungry, to go back. And what I believe is going to be my prime coming up for the next five to 10 years. I've honestly believed that my best years are coming up. So, and at the end of the day, I'm going to have to go up there and back that up, improve that at a high level in which I'm more than confident in. And I've stayed in shape physically and in conditioning. And I, I trained my wrestling style, literally everything I did wrestling for conditioning. I do now to keep myself ready to go so that the so moment I get cleared from my shoulder, it's boom, back to a wrestling ring. I make a couple phone calls and we're back. And that's it's that's how I live my life now. Anywhere in particular, any phone calls that you can mention <laughs> that you might be making? No. So, again, there's been stuff and I'm not going to I don't it's right, not good to right. put that out there. Right. Because all I can say is there's been stuff that's put out and it's not true. I know the, the text and the phone calls and the emails and uh and enough people know me in pro wrestling where I'm, a, I'm, you know, you know, it's not going to be for WWE, even right. though I think, I think if I would say, I think John Laurinaitis has hired me twice. I think if I made one phone call and say, yeah, John, I think I want to try to work things out with Vince. I think that would be very easy to do. I never want to have to go back to that environment ever again, unless there would have to be things on in writing, knowing my protection and not even creatively, but more knowing exactly what we're signing up for in that sense and uh but i don't even want to have to ever go there ever again and nor do i have to so 
apparently with what has been said online, who knows what's true or not, but it seems like WB is really kind of making a push. They don't want smaller guys anymore. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like Vince is going back to the old way. Obviously you fit in that mold. You don't want to go back, but you kind yeah. of fit in the mold of, of like the Vince guy, you know, the big, yeah. huge guy that looks. But I would question right. anyone that said that though, my work rate, I will put up against anyone. I really will, especially with my style and ability to work with any other talent. Like go back and watch my match. That's why well, I size you. and look, I mean like, yeah, no, but from yeah. a physical. Yeah. And I agree with that, but I, I think that's one thing. Some people like will make comparisons of the thing. I go, go back and watch, go watch live events going out and working main events, 15, 20, 25 minute matches. You won't see a lot of guys other than Brock that were able to do that. At that, like, it's just not so, but they, they've adjusted in their business model again. And I think and Cody made a comment like with their programming and they have a buffet assortment of talent. And that's what you need in pro wrestling. I, I respect and love all styles of pro wrestling. And that's why I, I, I think sometimes fans have their preference. They, they do. Everyone has their preference of what they like. But at the end of the day, you got to understand that there's different talents and different talents like different people and they base their styles off, off of what they're taught and how to draw money in different styles. Or, you know, if you're a, a big killer like me and I go out there and try to chain wrestle and do things, it doesn't translate to the a mass audience. It just doesn't. Like if I'm not, if I'm not vicious, I'm not intense. If I'm just going out and I'm not doing power moves. And now you can have a combination of that with that. But like in an example, remember Kane and Big Show did a match on Raw. Oh my many, God. many years ago. And they, they were chain trying wrestling, to change yeah. Because they wanted to show everyone in the back they could do it, right? I yep. remember being younger, not in the business yet, going, this is what's going on with that. And that is what you have to remember. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And that, and it, but there's there's a, a way to do everything, but you got to respect all styles. And you don't ever want to get too heavy into just one style. You want to have a mix of that. And then that creates a diverse television program where people can, you know, Focus on the thing that they like for that show, and there might be other things they don't like. The key is to focus on what you like and to understand that from a television standpoint and from a business standpoint, you want to have you want to have your big power guys, your hybrid power guys, your giants, your technical wrestlers, your high flyers, and your in your in your guys that can do it all, right? You want yeah. a balance of all that. And then on top of that, you need guys that can go out there and talk. You need the guys that, that can't talk, they got the managers that can talk. You got guys that can do this, that can do that, that can work with people, and it creates the best pro wrestling possible with that. And when you get any time and whenever you get something that's all too similar across the board, you know, in the same, if you hire a bunch of 300 pound guys and they're all the exact same and none of them can talk and they're just big looking, hunky body, hulky bodybuilder guys out there lunking around, that cool. There's going to be a small portion of people that are like, oh, this is awesome. I love this. And then the rest of the people are going to tune out. It's the same thing if you go too heavy on smaller based wrestlers doing all the same styles, beating giants at times where it, it, where it's just a disconnect outside of a rare good story, right? right? Then you got it. So you need a balance of all of this. And I think I think AEW has an understanding of that, and they have the momentum and the energy, obviously, with what they're doing and. I, I, I like what they're doing and I've liked what they've done from day one as far as surviving. And now I feel like now we're starting to see them step on the gas a little bit. So would you be interested in going to AEW down the road? I'm interested in, in anything at this point that I think is going to be beneficial for all parties. And I, and again, and I'm not, there's, I've talked about it enough on my, the Ryback show and I do my daily lives on those, you know, Yep. I used to live with Cody, you know, I'm not like, I don't, but I don't need to sit there and say what were anything going on or that. And there's been other places. And I think I've, again, I've just said when my shoulder's ready, I will, I will let everyone know. Yep. I will let everyone know the moment because the worst thing I could do is say, Hey, I want to set up a meeting and I want to, you know, I want to discuss creative or what we're going to do. And I got some ideas. Great. When can you start? I don't know. That's kind of, you know what I mean? I yeah, go, it could be, a, it could be a month, it could be three yeah. months. I don't know what the timetable is on, again, uh, overcoming a five disc fusion and shoulder replacement, other than I know that I am I can go back right now. Yes, I'm just trying, I'm at the very end, and I just need to make sure because I don't want to be hurt again. And I could wrestle in pain. This is more from a selfish standpoint of I don't want to go through all the atrophy on my right side, and I don't want to be an old man with a bum shoulder. 
right? So I'm just yep. like, I'm because the moment I get it right, I'll be fine. And I know how to protect myself. It was, I worked hurt my entire career through things. And I've learned since how to take care of myself better. And like, it's, it's just like, like I said, it could be a month. It could be three months. It might be longer. I don't know. Right now, I just know from what I'm being told and how I feel. They're like, this could at any time, the moment that tissue releases, you're in the clear. So it's, uh, but I will say they are the number one promotion that I definitely, it, just from having friends there and everyone I've talked to that's there um, on what kind of environment it is would, would be obviously yeah. the, I think the best fit. But again, there's a lot of things that they're, they're signing a lot of talent. We got to see again, I have some good creative stuff that I think always have been good at trying to find like the game in pro wrestling is you got to find a place for you to fit and without messing up other things going on. Right. And that's something I've always felt like I've, I've one of my strong suits with that, but we got to wait and see. And if, you know, again, if there's no opportunities when the time comes and things change and then I'll go, okay, well, what are the other options? What are the other options? And at the end of the day, this day and age say, let's just say no pro wrestling promotion was ever interested in me ever again. And nobody didn't care about anything. Just go, well, we live in a day and age where I have my business and financially I'm fine. I could just go do wrestling matches on the independents and have my matches recorded and upload them to my Ryback TV and continue growing my channel and making my money on that, which is more than most jobs on that. So yeah. at the end of the day, and then grow my supplement line and on top of that, my wrestling revenue and have, and again, 10 streams of, of revenue coming in. Now am I on TV? No, but I still can go out and do what I love at my own leisure and schedule. At the end of the day, it's not a bad thing, but I do believe there will be opportunities. And at the worst, I think, say again, nobody says that. I'll go out and do a few independent matches and remind everybody who the fuck I am pretty quickly. Like that's yeah. that's my mentality. Yep. And I'm not worried about that. And I've always I've always been able to back up anything like that I've, I've talked. So with AEW punk just signed there yeah what did you think about that because then the rumor now is they might be getting daniel bryan too so it's like wow they're yeah. really loading up on top level talent absolutely and i'm very happy for them and again so everything with punk again this is all in the past right, right. i've discredited everything there were lies and i've and I'll, we'll talk about that briefly again to remind people he was in a very bad place mentally and physically and he was very hurt working me from the beginning he was hurt working a lot of people and complained about a lot of people with that it is what it is. I'm happy he had that moment because as much as we're different in a lot of ways, we do have similar things. I think we agree on about the business. And, and I've always, I've always commended him for the choices he, he to go out and try to do what he tried to do just as far as from a, a, a mentality standpoint and, and having the courage to go try to do something different that, that maybe a lot of people wanted of right. that and having being out with my injuries and everything going on, and working hard to get back, it made me happy because he was gone even longer with that, right? With no wrestling. It made me happy to see he had that moment because I could relate to it. So, and I think, and like I said, and I put out a tweet with it, despite any any personal feelings or differences on things with that, he is good for pro wrestling with that. And, and I don't agree with everything. And there's been personal things we've had when we were there, but the guy's over. There's no denying that he's 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 not over. And I think if his head's on right, and which I think it's going to be on better than it was in WWE, I was used to get along with him before I met him again, and we got along great until everything with money on the line in WWE with that. I think he seems like he's in a better place mentally now, and I hope he's physically fine. And, and like I said, that environment, I, it seems a little more like a better fit with it. And... Uh, I think he's very beneficial to them as I think Daniel Bryan will be as well. So you'll never hear me ever like say, Oh, I, Oh, I don't think a guy should be signed. I, I never want nobody not to, to, to make money and, and do well in that in life or anything like that. Despite personal feelings, I could put those aside. Like I, he said what he said and I've said the truth and it is what it is with that, but he's good for pro wrestling. And I think he's going to help get, get help them get to a higher level and, as the guys that they brought in and what people need to understand with that too. And with when you bring in the right pieces, have you ever heard Bruce Pritchard talk about Hogan dust with people? Basically Hogan, if you work with Hogan, he gets, yeah. gives you the rub. 
Yeah. So that I always use that term though, just for guys that have star power. That 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 Hogan dust has been carried on to different people, and yep. eventually it became like Cena dust, whatever the punk. Yep. That, that, that that there's very few guys in pro wrestling where they have a a certain amount of the star power left, right? So anytime you can get a guy with that star power still with that, when you put him in there and now he's working a program with Darby Allen, and then he goes on and works a program with Jungle Boy, that that elevates their homegrown talent, and over time people start seeing the talent at a, at a, at a with more star power yeah. and it, it's, it speeds up the process. And so that is what they, and they are very aware of that. And it makes me very happy to see that in doing that. And it's not, you just bring these guys in and just, you put them over all your guys all the time, but you find a creative way to bring them in and to kind of make it work. Right. And yeah. that's what I think they've learned from other companies and they've got the right people in place to know that. And, it's I think it's a good environment, man. Like it, they really like to me, it's a hungry environment for a positive change in pro wrestling where, where they're gearing up for like there is a war going on in wrestling and it, it doesn't have nothing to do with ratings. It's a war on making the business better and treating wrestling wrestlers better and, and guys coming together and realizing that look at the way the business has been all these years. Now there's a new game in town and we can make we could do pro wrestling better than it's been done as far as how how treating people better with that. And it's always yeah. going to be, there's always going to be politics and there's always going to be the BS and all that at different times. But if, if there's just a fundamental understanding and that comes from the top down on, a, on, on the owner's mindset, that, that is shared across the board. And it, to me, it just seems from everything I've been told and I've never met Tony, but it is a much healthier, better work environment. So I'm happy that punk has had an opportunity to go back because and like I said, walking away and leaving, we have a lot of things that we're different on. We have some pretty strong similarities, though, as far as the way things have happened and probably our views. But like it's it, it's when I left and, and going through this, you know, I, I don't want that to be my end. You know, a lot of people don't even know what happened to me. A lot of people I just was off TV and I've never been mentioned once. Right. And I was at one time the 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 biggest thing on that show. How does that happen? Like. It is what it is, but, and I've told the truth and there's been a lot of lies and BS out there on a lot of negative things. And it, it's really, really unfortunate, but I, all I've done is continue to put my truth out there. And I hope to have one day have the opportunity to have the, the rest of my career go out the way that it should on that, on a much better note and on the truth with that. And that's why I'm happy for punk that he's getting that opportunity. Simply because you do have a lot in common because punk got that same triple h speech you know like nobody's gonna be a bigger star after yeah. cena like we're not gonna and he was beating cena in a lot of the metrics so it was like wow i guess you know they really have their mindset that they're not gonna push their yeah. guys. you got you know feed me more was over big and it didn't seem like they were ready to go that extra mile yeah. i see title maybe but then they wouldn't go the extra mile and keep, put the rocket ship to you yeah know, you know and strap it to you and have it sent to the moon it just <laughs> well i'll like say too well punk had no it. problem though punk had no problem going over me when i had all the momentum Right, right, right. That's part, so, how how much is he in it for himself or for the business? And that's what I see. I think that's my mindset. If somebody's hotter than me, run with them. It's up to me to figure out how to get hotter. And that's, but again, he'd already been through that, so he's at an fu point to the company. Well, I'm going to just take everything I can get now, and that's just the way. And that I'm not putting that creative or anything on him with that. But that was right then of the time I was the number two merch seller going in right behind John with all of that for a period of half like seven eight months with all of that. You know, and then I, had, I think I had seven pay per view losses while I was the top in the top spot. With that, that that's pretty unheard of, and it got more popular until we took it all away. With that, but it goes both ways on that. But I think that he he maybe his mindset was at the time he'd already been through the ringer with all of that, right? Right. And having, yeah. like his momentum was 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 already stifled. So why is he then gonna you know do something for the company? That's that's the nature of the business. That's the upper echelon of talent like that main event level that's the political the unfortunate part of the business and where i was at at the time you know you know creatively it would have made sense for me to probably go in there and go no vince this is bullshit what are we going to we're going to throw this all away don't do this but uh, realistically i never should have been put in that position to begin with if we weren't ready to run with it right but right. cena got went out with the arm injury and suggested they put me in the main event so that which was fine i was more than capable of being in the main event and always was and I, and I prefer to be there, but it was like, I would have preferred to continue to build my momentum until the timing was right. But 
it is what it is. That's what happened. I learned a lot of valuable lessons about the business and about that kind of stuff. And in that when you have lightning in a bottle, don't let someone throw it away unless, but you know, that's one of those things you run the risk of with the way the business is. If I would have went and spoken up on that, there probably would have been a report that Ryback was really difficult to do business with on that. Yeah. Right? Yep. So where do you, cause I hadn't been there that long. So where do you, so that's kind of the game. And I, and from everything I knew, I go, I don't have enough power yet to probably fight this. And, uh, and you go along with it and, you know, and, and I always did business. So that's the only thing too. I've seen other things. I, I go, because you speak the truth after you leave on what goes on there. doesn't mean that you were difficult to do business with always, always did what was asked. I approach it like physical acting with that on any role, because that's exactly what it is. It's physical acting, portraying pro wrestling. And the closer you could resemble that in real life, the better you play those roles. But any role, that's how I embraced it very early on and go, okay, what's the best go out to make this as best I can. And I always did that. So. But. So as we hit the wind down, we head towards the finish here with you. I know we're talking about you're getting ready for a comeback, but outside of wrestling, what's next? Like not, not in ring and getting in shape and stuff. Like what's next outside of wrestling, the nutrition, the supplements, you know, everything as far as that. Yeah. And just continue to continuing to grow the business and, and help people. And I do my, the Ryback show daily lives and I'll have guests on again. Um, but we started switched up the format to that, to more helping people with personal questions. And we still talk pro wrestling on there, health, fitness, supplementation, mindset, pro wrestling, positivity, world events. Like it's more of a with answering questions to help people based off that. And it ties in a little better with my branding, but everything with me, like it was creating financial freedom through my business and, and everything I've got going on, getting the health back, regardless, say pro wrestling, just say pro wrestling was never a thing again, again, continuing to get my health to where my shoulder is, is just completely never an issue ever again, growing my business, doing my feeding time videos on, on YouTube, where I do the vegan feeding time where I'll go out once a week and eat a vegan uh, cheat meal or something. Uh, Vegas has the most vegan restaurants or one of the most vegan restaurants in, in all of the world. I think we're like in the top five in the United States or number three or something behind like LA and New York. It's crazy. We have a, a ton of restaurants here. So I, to help people educate people on a plant-based diet, because that's something that's giving me my health back. I'm in the best shape I've been in, in, in a long, long time. And but mentally in such a good place and like blood work wise and lab work, blood pressure, like blood pressure was like one eighteen over 54, which for a 290 pound guy is, is pretty damn good with that. And, uh, just continuing to grow my brand, uh, and help people with everything. But the supplement business is something I'm truly passionate about because everything going on in the world with everything with COVID and just the way the world is, I truly believe we as human beings, we're all a blip on this radar of, of human evolution. Um, and we're doing a lot of bad things in, in our lifetimes and in prior capitalism for bad um, is the reason why we are in the position we are in, in a lot of different things. And I believe the system itself isn't broken. It's the people that are broken, but capitalism for good, where we sell, but we sell good for good, where we profit, but we actually give something of service and benefit to people and don't sacrifice their health or, or hurt them or in another, another person's life in a negative way or animal's life in a negative way. And that to me is going to be the mindset moving forward. And that I truly believe in and being fully transparent with people and being honest and, and just as a business, I am very, really excited to actually be able to help people and people message me that I've helped them lose hundreds of pounds and get their life back on track. And, and I tell people, fix your food, you fix your mood. Um, and that to me is very rewarding. So that is something I'm going to continue to do to the day that I die, um, because I'm very passionate about that. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is hopefully be able to go back to pro wrestling and continue to do everything that I'm doing right now, exactly as I am. And that is and grow my brand. And like I said, the TikTok has exploded again. Yeah, big time. So I'm very blessed and grateful for my time. And, and again, we talk about things and I want to make it clear. Like when I talk about things, I'm just simply being transparent and sharing what happened with things. I'm always grateful for everything, but there's, it, this is a really, I would love for everything with WWE to be great. At the end of the day, I was friends with Vince's brother, Rod. I used to talk to Rod quite a bit. It always, I always, and Rod would always go, Vince always talked, you know, highly of you and liked you. I go, well, that's not what I've seen 
from everything I see going on and with that and not one phone call ever. So, but Rod was very like, I got along with Rod really, really well, but at the end of the day, I wish everything was great. And the, it is what it is though. And I've had to take that negative negativity and use it for positivity and everything that I'm doing. And, um, and just truly being grateful for every day. And I've learned throughout all of this, take away all the BS and take, just take away everything though. Um, and like money, and I love money for financial freedom and grow. I want to continue to grow and do great things. I've learned the value of happiness uh, in like being home and with my dogs and in my family um, in understanding that it's not a financial number that makes you happy. It's not a, a push that makes you happy or a championship that makes you happy. It's our mindset and it exists in all of us. Um, and I've learned that in my time away that I don't know if I ever would have learned if I never was injured or didn't go through the things that I've went through um, with that. So it's, I've been blessed, man. And I tell people too, a lot of another one they want to address there. A lot of people think that like, I just couldn't get booked for the last three years in pro wrestling with that. And I think it's very important for people to understand that I stopped doing my bookings one because of my health and my doctor was on me. But my dog, Sophie, has disc disease. And in my time with all my injuries, my little Frenchie had eight ruptures in a row, um, which, thank God, through True Panion and Pet Insurance, it um, she had eight, uh, seven back ruptures in a row. And then last year ruptured her neck, um, which I stopped doing everything to keep her alive because she wasn't allowed to be boarded anymore. And like we can't put her. I got to walk her with a little doggy stroller. She can't wear a, a harness. And she can't wear a leash because she's susceptible. But I've I've since switched their diet to a whole food diet. She's been fantastic. But um, I, I've I've learned throughout all this time though to really cherish life in, in each and every day. And um, that wasn't the reason why I, I I stopped doing wrestling bookings. I stopped taking them because to keep my dog alive. And I think that was wow. something that it was important because Mark Henry made some comments. And Mark knows the things he said. I'm very disappointed it is him as, as a human being. And he used to follow me and I, and I, and I know where he stands now professionally and personally with that. And it's over with, I wish him the absolute best, but he knows all the lies that he said. That was the reason why I stopped doing wrestling bookings, not because I'm some piece of shit that wasn't able to get booked. So I want people to understand that because that is the truth. Yeah, it's all, I don't want to get into it, but a little no, bit we don't even know. Let's just leave it as it is. Yeah. Leave it as yeah. it is. It doesn't yep. even, but yep. he knows what he did. It's yep. forever. I wish him the best. But there's, it is what it is. That's the truth. Yeah. Just curious with Rod McMahon though. How'd you get in with him? I actually, this is so weird though. I tried to get him for an interview, and I was like, he'll, he's gonna ignore it. He's not gonna. But he got back to me. He was so nice. He goes, listen, I don't like, I don't like yeah. the interviews. I, I like, but he was so professional, so nice. I was like, wow, I can't believe that he actually like took the time to call me back. I was like, you just ignore me or whatever. But yeah, he was like, he's like, hey, you know, you, hey, good list of uh, guys you had on or you know whatever he said. And he's like, but he goes, I don't want to do it. I don't like to do wrestling stuff. I, I keep that, you know, my brother, that's his thing. Yeah. So how did you become friends with him? Just always he buys, he, was, he used to buy Feed Me More Nutrition and wow. subscribe to my weekly message of positivity with a discount. And he would wow. always respond to my, I but I met Rod. So people don't know this. I, me and Rod, and we used to, text here and there, not a lot before this, but he, I met him at a Houston. I used to always stay no matter wherever TV was, we'd book our hotels. I always would book a room 20, 30 miles out so that I can go to a gym and there were all the other guys wouldn't go to a gym. Cause usually the more guys that would go to a gym, more fans would know oh, that. Yeah. And so yeah. I always wanted to go focus, get my workout. So I would always go to a gym a little outside of town to, to get my workout in on TV days with that. And uh, I, I, at this gym, I do my workout. I was getting ready to go do the tanning beds. They had tanning beds. They're all gray. I'll hop in the tanning bed before TV. And this guy is out by the front desk, goes right back. And uh, he goes, I'm Vince's brother, Rod. And I'm looking at him. I just, so I think instantly this guy's full of shit. He's lying to me. I had no idea Vince had a brother and he's talking to me. And I'm just thinking, God, crazy. This guy's, what is this story? And I'm looking at his face. His face is just spot like he had the same nose as Vince. Yeah, and, and yeah. there you could you could tell. Like you could, I go, you are Vince's brother. He goes, yeah, I told you that. <laughs> and uh, so, anyways, we exchange numbers, and, and he nicest guy in the world, like you said, and uh, which might shock some people. And yeah. he, uh, we just stayed in touch, and then I, he he messaged, emailed me. I hadn't heard from him in years after all this happened, and I've uh, been away. 
he started he started replying to my weekly newsletter messages from feedmemore.com with that for feed me more nutrition and just saying uh, he'd agree with me on things that I was talking about uh, and whatever they were. And, uh, and he loved the supplements and he would buy them all the time. And I would send him things I go, try this. We got this. And I'd send him. I, I wish I had the relationship with Vince that I had with Rod. Right. <laughs> but the, yeah. uh, because it was just so laid back and, and so natural and nice. And it just wasn't, he, he's just he's so, it's such a nice human being. Um, but anyways, true story. And I've talked about this when, I was with Rybaxel, Rybaxel with Curtis Axel, the punishment period, I call it, where with all of that, <laughs> Vince at, in the Houston, we had a tag match. I think it was a four corners tag match that day. Um, and uh, Vince uh, comes up to me, uh, it's something, and I say, we're walking down the hallway, we say hi, and I go, hey, Vince, I go, I met your brother Rod today. He goes, oh, yeah. I go, yeah. I go, man, you guys look a lot alike. He got red in the face instantly. I'm talking like just Brock Lesnar 15 minutes into a match with Kurt Angle beat red. <laughs> and he, he just like, Oh, we look nothing I like. And he storms <laughs> off like, like a child. And yeah. I just go, fuck me. Like what the, like what, what is going on later that night? Vince comes back up to me. I go, great. He's going to, which by the way, the finish got put on me for the tag match. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this just goes to the, I go, of course. The uh, um, Vince goes, I really want you to meet my mom. So I want you to meet my mom. So I'm thinking this is like, he's, I guess, like having going to have a bunch of talent, go meet his mom. His mom was 90 something at the time. Right. She's a hundred and something now. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. So yep. I go into this room. They, they, somebody brings me into this room and it's me and Vince's mom and nobody else. And then in like, in, I'm just thinking like, what's going on? And she goes, she goes, oh, it's nice to meet you. The first thing she said, she goes, my son's going to live for a long time. And I'm just thinking, what the actual <laughs> fuck is going on? Like, what is, did he send, like, did he put her up to like, like what? And, uh, and then I, there were some other people like security or other people, no other wrestlers were in there. It was just me. And it was so weird, but it, I mean, fantastic lady, very nice woman. Uh, and she looked great. And like, she just got done playing tennis and it was, but yeah. That was my Rod story that day in Houston because his mom lived there. I don't know if she still does at the time, but um, I was sad when I heard, man, that, that got me because I, I didn't see. I talked to him not that long ago, and he, I, didn't, I wasn't aware if there were even any health issues or anything. And then I, I saw that he passed, and I just go, man, that it kind of that got me a little bit. So. Yeah. He was older, right, than Vince by a couple I think years? he's a couple years older, a year and a half, two years if I'm not – maybe three if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he was 77 at the time. I could be wrong right. on that. And I know Vince is now 76, I think so. But yeah, man, that was, uh, it's crazy. It just, it, it was like, I said, you go back and forth and things and just talk. And like, it was just like, and then you just read that. He's like, Oh, he passed away. I go, Jesus Christ. So. Very random. Was he, him and Vince close at all or not really? It doesn't kind of seem like it. I don't, it, the vibe I got again, I can't say for sure, but right. he, he, it didn't seem that they were overly close from everything, but obviously they talked still yeah. and, and things. And he made that known on certain things he'd said, but he was always very supportive. And he just, he goes, I loved you, man. He goes, he goes, I, I just want to see you go back. And he always, he goes, I hope you go to AEW. He was always very, yeah. and at the time, like just very supportive with that and he goes it'll be cool to see you back again and he he knew all the injuries and everything going on and he would check like see that to me was like he would like check on that stuff he's like how you feeling how you doing and it's like that's where i look i go man how come the guy who i gave everything for can't do that right right so yep. people understand like and that that's why i think people i to me that's why i, I get angry at vince because i'm like it doesn't need to be that way man Everything you have is for people that have literally given their lives, you know, and, that, and no one's not grateful. It's just like when you hoard everything, though, and greet like and we see it with the UFC now, what they're doing with the fighters, because Vince taught Dana everything Dana's doing now to the fighters. Yep. It sucks. You don't need to be that way. Everybody can win in that. But that's capitalism for bad. And that's the problem in the world. And nobody's saying you can't make more money or do this. But when you do it at the expense of human beings, 
human beings, man. They give you, and we got we got the Eddie Guerreros and the Chris Benoit's and everybody up there, man. Everybody, British Bulldog, Yokozuna, everybody we grew up loving, man. They all died young, and they all died young for him. And that's the that to me is what I feel I've been truly been blessed that to, to get my health back and learn from from that because being aware if i would have stayed i would have been another sad case it, it was I, I got out of there in a matter of months i would have been a sad case because there would have been no no overcoming that it would have been pain pills surgery and just it would have just been one thing after the other on that i would not have been protected i've always been protected but i've been protected in a way that's shocked me even on this but i feel a sense of responsibility and two, in learning the vegan diet and understanding the the climate, you know, crisis that we have in in the agricultural farming, and we're destroying the planet and everything with the water. Like we have a lot of real issues that we as humans that this blip on the radar, we got to start taking some accountability and looking in the mirror. And I felt for the first time in my life, man, I feel a deeper sense of meaning past just myself on helping raise awareness for the right things and going back. And I feel like I've been given back my health for a reason. And I felt like I've not aged for a reason. I've been held intact for a reason to be able to have an opportunity to do what I want to do. Yes, but something much bigger than just me. And like I said, we're all blips on this radar of human evolution that it, we, 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 but we're doing some serious, serious damage here in the world yeah. and that, that there's going to be no coming back from sooner than later. So that is that is something I'm I I hold near and dear to me and, and look forward to doing as I return to to TV and a big stage again. Hopefully, if I'm if I'm blessed to have that opportunity again. Nice, well, right back. Awesome stuff. Before let you go, where is the TikTok, the social yep. media, the uh, Instagram, the Twitter? Give us all your social media plugs. So I'm on TikTok and Instagram, the big guy Ryback twenty two. Uh, we're about to hit 1.6 million on there, uh, I think today or tomorrow. So thank you nice. to everyone following me on there. Now we got to catch up to that guy, the rock. That's, <laughs> oh, Who is man. that? What did he yeah, ever do? Guy, yeah. yeah. What did he ever do in the business? He's, everything he puts is, he's like the Hansel <laughs> of, uh, 2021. The, uh, back, my wife got his, um, his tequila for me. She's like, Oh, this is the rocks tequila. Of course yeah. she's feeling it in that too. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could. There's nothing you can't put the rock's name on right now. That, yeah. no, I'm, that's I think it's honestly very motivating to see somebody do so well um, in so many so many aspects of life. The at Ryback at Twitter, and then the big one if people you my YouTube Ryback TV, and uh, that's where we got it, the the feeding time videos, and uh, you get a little bit of everything on that. A little entertainment, inspiration, cool food, good vegan food, and uh, some really cool places here, and then as well as the Ryback show on all podcast platforms and then on Ryback TV as well on that. And man, feed me more nutrition, feed me more.com is uh, the big thing for me uh, where we got premium supplements for men and women with no artificial sweeteners or colors and vegan friendly. Uh, and that's on feed me more.com. Nice. Awesome stuff. Ryback. Thank you so much for all the time today. Really appreciate it. No, greatly appreciate it. Uh, always grateful man to have opportunities to talk. So thank you.